Hello everyone, before I start the video, I just want to let you guys know that I have a Patreon. You can look in the description of the video for a link to my Patreon. I also have it on my website, GhostSquad57.com, and I also have a link to the Patreon during my outro. Oh, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Mark for supporting me this month on Patreon. That was really awesome of him to do that. Um, I haven't been able to make as much videos as I would like because lately I, I recently got a job and um, it's consuming a lot of my time. So I haven't really been able to make as much videos as I would like, um, but hopefully I can sort of get back into the rhythm of making videos and produce more content for you guys. Anyway, yeah, so at my Patreon, I just have a really basic uh, goals. I have a uh, $1 gives you access to my videos early. I usually put them on Patreon two to three days earlier than they would go up on YouTube. Um, my goals are $20 and $40 at the moment. $20 just because if I get $20 a month, I, I can actually put that money towards uh, games and do more videos on games because at that point, I'm actually getting a little bit of money and I can actually do something with that. Um, and at $40, I'll spend even more time um, doing videos. And at $40, I plan on bringing back the reviews, which I've kind of put off because they were very time-consuming and I just decided they weren't really worth the time to do it. Um, I would like to get back into doing them, but I think that I want to at least have more incentive to do those videos. Also at $40, I'll start to invest more of my income towards uh, better recording equipment, better audio equipment. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you guys for listening, and enjoy the rest of the video. Hello everyone, it's Keith here, and today I'm taking a look at Darkest Dungeon by Red Hook Studios. So for those of you who don't know, Darkest Dungeon um, is, the easiest way to describe it, I guess, would be a rogue light uh, dungeon crawler. Um, so yeah, for those of you who have never played this game, um, that's how I would describe it. It's a very interesting game. I've seen a lot of videos on it, and I've been wanting to play it for a while now, but due to various reasons, I just haven't really been able to dedicate time to it or even get the game. Um, but lately, I got the game during a live stream, and I've been playing it and it's just been a ton of fun. So anyway, once you start up a game, this is your starting screen here. Not all these buildings are available to you when you first start the game, but I'm going to go ahead and explain what each, of them, what, what each of them is. So you have the tavern here, which is used to relieve stress from your uh, members, from your party. Um, stress is a vital uh, attribute to pay attention to in this game. Basically, your characters have a stress bar, which you see here under their name. And when you're in combat, various things can happen, or when you're dungeon crawling, various things can happen that increase your character's stress level. Uh, whether it be you getting a battle and enemies use attacks that affect your stress, or if you trigger a trap, and just other things can happen that greatly um, increases the stress level of your party. And you have places like the tavern, which is used to relieve stress from your party members. You have the stagecoach here where you can purchase um, new members to add to your party. You just sort of click them and drag them there. You see here you have quite a lot of party members and that's sort of how this game uh, works is after a while you just need you just need to start buying a bunch of party members so that way you can have some that aren't constantly stressed out. Um, one interesting thing about this game is and why stress is so vital you'll see that once I get into a dungeon but at one point when the character's stress meet, uh, fills up to the complete fullest, um, they can actually gain an affliction. An affliction is just like a negative trait. Like for instance, this person is irrational, so if I leave I right click on it, I get some information. And uh, yeah, so you, you just, it sucks so bad. Irrational can make them like just sort of act without any reason. I'm like they'll just completely take over a turn and mess it all up. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is uh, your hero party over here, your party. You can right-click on them and get information about them, their preferred position, you know, what position they're um, most powerful in. And then you have, you know, just their abilities, their uh, their resistance, and all that stuff. And then, of course, um, you have other buildings here, is this, this here, which is used to retreat, which is used to uh, treat diseases. You have two areas here. You just sort of click and drag them to put them in there. Um, yeah, you have the treatment ward which is used to uh, treat some of the negative inflictions. And then you still have the medical ward which is used to treat diseases. For instance, this guy has um, rabies and I'm trying to get him treated for that. 
Um, and we also, you can also, I didn't mention this, but you can come over here and click on this and upgrade these uh, buildings so that they have greater effect. You can do things like increase the amount of people that you can put in here and also increase the treatment and all that. Um, and you don't want to, you don't have to click on these buildings. There's actually this toolbar over here that you can click on, on the left hand side to cycle through the buildings instead of having to go back out and click on them. Then you have the Abbey here, which is kind of stress relief for the more holy uh, characters in your party. Uh, and then you have the Guild, which uh, which is for training your troops. So you drag them over here, and then you can increase some of their abilities and increase, like um, for instance, I can increase Stunning Blow or unlock more uh, different abilities. And you have normal wagon, which is I'm not actually nomad wagon. I'm not actually far enough in the game to see what that is. And you have ancestor memories, time, you will know where you can see cutscenes. It's pretty interesting. There's some backstory there. And you have blacksmith, where you can upgrade weapons that your characters have, weapons and armor. Oh, so yeah, there is definitely a lot of RPG elements that goes into this game. So yeah, enough of this. We're gonna go out here. Oh, I also have the trinket inventory here. Uh, trinkets are just items that. Uh, just sort of give random attributes um, and you can actually sell these if you need money um, you can you see, see your whole shift to sell trinkets um, I believe here. See, it gives me the amount that they're worth uh, and then you also have your glossary here which just kind of gives you some basic help of the game of like what certain terms mean stuff like that and you actually have, that's the pause right there, and then we have this, which is just sort of uh, get quest, miscellaneous quest goals that we can complete to get additional rewards. Then we have activity log, which just kind of gives us the activity for everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to embark, which is where we actually choose an area we'd like to embark to. Uh, I'm going to do a very simple area. Hmm... I think we're going to do this one here. See, so once you select an area that you want to go to, um, you can just drag people that you want to go into the battle here, and that'll build your party. So I want him to go in front. Her to go about right here, because she's more, I kind of feel like she's more effective in the back. Um, and you have different, obviously you have different um, characters for different purposes. Um, in this particular instance, you know, I have a knight who's sort of the, the tank, or I think paladin is his technical term. Oh, crusader. Okay. But yeah, you know, he's uh, kind of like your heavy hitting tank with, you know, deals holy damage and whatnot. Then you have the plague doctor who's sort of all about poisoning and, you know, um, stat, uh, stat based attacks. And then you have um, grave robber. I've never actually used this character before, so I'm not entirely sure of what her strong suit is. Um, and then you have the Vestal here, which is kind of like the healer, your cleric, I guess you would say, who does things like heal and can help with other various things. Okay, so her per Earth preferred position is there. Um, okay, so I can swap you around. So it says she's most effective there, so let's do that. And then let's go ahead and hit provision. So before you start a quest, you're asked to go to the provision shop where you can purchase uh, items for your uh, travel you know you pretty much food and torches is like a hard requirement I tend to purchase a lot of food and torches um, really I kind of bought too much but and you can sell it back to them if you really want um, but we're just gonna go ahead and embark because I'm just doing this quest for the sake of this video anyway so yeah Mm, there we go. Now we're actually in the game. So here you go. So once you're inside a dungeon, um, A and A moves you, or D moves you forward, and A moves you back. Um, you have a little map here, which is actually clicks where you want to go. Um, so we're right here right now. So let's go to this area, move this room. So we just click here, and then we just move forward. And you sort of have these various things, like for instance, we have this uh, bookshelf here. We press W to look at it, and this is kind of like uh, we can f flip through these volumes, and something good could happen or bad. We're gonna take the chance. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so right off the bat, negative trait. Okay. So that was some bad luck. 
Oh, I actually surprised him, so that means I get the first attack. So yeah, the mid some every each time you go into a dungeon, before you enter the dungeon, I forgot to say this, but you have uh, your mission here. In this instance, it's a scout mission, so I just have to explore 90% of the rooms, and it will complete. The, and this is how I complete this dungeon. So anyway, now this is combat. Combat is like a turn-based RPG um, where positioning of your heroes is vital. Okay, so let's go ahead and do bleeding daggers on this character here because this enemy is particularly annoying because he has the ability to do some really powerful um, stress attacks. So let's try to get rid of him. I can't really get rid of him with this character. Actually, let's do this. Disorienting Blast. That should stun him. Yes. Perfect. So that'll stun him and prevent him from being able to attack the next turn. We can do Dazzling Light, which that's actually a stun as well. So I did, that was kind of a waste there. I didn't really need a double stun. Um, and let's take my tank and just hopefully that kills him. Yes. Yeah, so this game can be quite... Um, difficult at times like right now you know it's really basic enemies um, so it's not too difficult but when you start to get enemies um, there are some times where you start to get huge amounts of variety of enemies so you'll have to constantly monitor your stress your health your positioning and all that just to make sure you're getting the optimal um, performance out of your heroes or party I should say yeah and also when you kill an enemy their body um, is still there. Um, I think if you land a critical, their body disappears, but in this instance, the body's still there, so I can't actually attack. If a hero, like this, that will actually count as a space, and I have to get that out in order to attack. Like, if I want to attack back him, him back there, which I can't, I would have to first get rid of that body, and then they'll move up, and then I can finally attack him. It's a very weird system there. The body thing is really annoying, to be honest. This kind of makes it a really big pain. Yes, this is a really simple dungeon. I've been through this dungeon before, and it's, you know, it's not too difficult now. Um, I should have actually selected a different attack there. I don't know why I stunned. I was not paying attention. Alright, so let's go ahead and just kill you. Oh, wow. She, oh, she moves up when you do that. Okay. So that's the downside to that attack. Okay, so he resisted the blue damage that that ability has. Yeah, and with every uh, ability, there's just so much thought that goes into every move once you're playing in an actual, like, difficult battle. Um, if you mouse over, like, any ability, they just have so much uh, stats about them and use cases that you really do have to think about every move before you make it. Um, which I like. Like, it's very strategic. And, you know, it's just, it's a simple yet complex system you know very simple to pick up and understand but very difficult to master um, so yeah I, I really like the RPG elements in this game they're just simple enough to where they work um, so yeah we do have to keep our heroes fed they'll kind of complain once they're hungry also we have the torch here as we move um, our torch becomes dimmer and we just click on it to revitalize the uh, fire Purpose is made clear. And keeping your fire lit does have positive attributes. Like in this instance, um, having the light at radiant, which is what it's at now, increases our scouting and increases our chances of surprising monsters. If the if your light is if your torch is very dim, you can expect to for enemies to sneak up on you and get additional attacks. And also, the uh, um, I already, I already activated that. And also, when the lights dim, your the characters gain stress at a much higher rate. So yeah, you you always want to make sure you carry enough torches with you, um, so that way you can get through the area without any issues. Oh, oh wow. Okay, <laughs> she just instantly grabbed that. Oh yeah, I think that's part of her. Oh yeah, see that was part of her ability there. She's obsessed with killing. So that's why she triggered that trap there. She just activated it without any input from me. That's very interesting. So yeah, it, it, and that's one of the interesting dynamics to the game. And also one of the more annoying dynamics is that your character's um, attributes, whether they be negative or positive, just complete, can completely change 
um, the outcome of how things are. So it's it's very interesting. These are probably these look like stress. Yeah, these are stress enemies. So a lot of their attacks are involve around involve um, increasing my stress for my um, party. Uh, I hate the stress system. Like it it just it's like, actually I think it's a great mechanic, but I hate it because it requires a lot of thought and you can totally get screwed over in the long run by it. So like stress enemies are super annoying. Um, these enemies don't seem to leave bodies behind. I'm not sure why. I think it's because of uh, just how they are. Mm. So let's do that. Hurt you, and then I'll. Then we can maybe you'll die. There we go. And then my tank will kill this one with one hit. Um, let's actually stun it. I think its turn is next. Oh, it resisted that. Okay. So yeah, and further in the game, you, um, of course, different party members you can recruit have Another different classes, and each of the classes are so unique at their abilities, and even different people you hire. So clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? And um, even if you hire people with the same class, um, oftentimes you'll get... Um, party members with completely different ability and skill sets as well. So it's very interesting just to see all the unique variety that the game has to offer. And the game is a roguelike, so, you know, a character dies, they're, they're dead, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, g you know, you done goofed. Oh, wow, that was actually really good. Okay, so let's see here. Um, well, this is actually, I kind of want to kill the tank. Wow! Getting incredibly lucky here. This was not how I was going during my live stream. I was getting some really horrible luck when I was live streaming this game, so I'm not sure what's going on now. I think because you're dazzled. Ooh! This is just going incredibly well. Alright, so let's have you do some decision there. Oh, I thought that would kill her, but okay. Um, let's do you. Oh, yeah, see, that's one of the stress attacks. Oh, that one's so annoying because it does so much. Let's kill you. Okay, I thought that would kill him. Alright, alright. Okay. Um... Wonder how much attack does that do? Okay, it doesn't matter. I think that's more of a debuff uh, attack. Here we go. Alright, we have some here. We have a skeleton key. Uh, yeah, you can just pick up you can pick up random things after battling enemies. So I'm gonna try to clear this level out and then before I end this video, although I've already been playing it for quite a bit now. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I've showed uh, the game well enough. Ooh, there's a trap. Yeah, you got to be careful for those traps. Um, if you don't see them, you can just walk right over them and activate them. Oh, here's a camp. Oh, that's a loot. My bad. A fortune waiting to be spent. Okay. There should be an enemy encounter here. Okay, nothing. All right, so I think um, the video has been going on long enough. I think you guys get the gist of the game. Um, overall, it's a pretty fun game. Um, I've been having a lot of fun playing it. It's really simple, but at the same time, it's very satisfying. Um, I think they did a really good job with the uh, gameplay. I think they, d they did the right balance between simplicity and complexity um, to where it's just really fun to pick it up, play it, and enjoy the game. Um, so this game is available on... Windows, Mac, and Linux, and also Vita, interestingly enough, and I believe it's also on um, PS4 and possibly Xbox One. Um, let me just double check that real quick. I believe it is available on the major consoles. Okay, yeah, it is on Windows, Mac, Linux, PlayStation 4, and Vita. Okay, so it is not on um, Xbox consoles. That's kind of a shame because this is a really fun game. Um, so yeah, anyway, I definitely recommend this game. It's, you know, it really is a game where what you see is, is what you get. Like, if this looks like a fun game to you, 
then you'll definitely enjoy this game. Like it's, I was looking at gameplay of this game, like this looks fun, I bought it and it was fun. Um, I absolutely recommend this game if you're a fan of dungeon crawlers or just games with a very sort of dark, atmospheric, uh, melancholy to them. This is a very fantastic game that I cannot recommend enough. Uh, the game's about $20 MSRP. Um, I got it on sale for $15, and I, I think it was worth it. It was a very fun game. Anyway, uh, guys, this has been Keith taking a look at Darkest Dungeon. See you all later.